You know, even in a toxic tier zero format, although I've seen some people say that this is actually a good format, I don't know how, but playing all of the decks in Yu-Gi-Oh, the best deck, the worst deck, the rogue decks, the tier two decks, help you get better at the game. There was a lot of positive response to my last Getting Better at Yu-Gi-Oh! video, and I figured since Yu-Gi-Oh! is kind of in a downward stage, I guess, at this point, and we're just kind of in a non-competitive time right now, I feel like now would be a great time to be talking about things like this. So let's dive on into it, shall we? Hello, ladies and gentlemen, it is your host with the most A for yellow R32 here and destroy the ever-living boo-boo stain off of that subscribe button swing climbing further beyond the 1K ladder. I really do appreciate all of the support. If my voice sounds kind of deep, uh, don't worry, I didn't deep throat a cactus or anything. Uh, my voice has just been kind of going in and out today because I went for a run in 66 degree weather in Florida yesterday. If you're in Europe, we use the Fahrenheit system, so convert 66 degrees Fahrenheit to Celsius and you'll know what it feels like. Ah, it sucks. But you know what? We gotta be healthy so my fat ass ain't sitting around playing Persona 4 Golden for about six hours today. Totally didn't just do that. <laughs> so let's talk about playing decks in Yu-Gi-Oh! More specifically, the best decks. You know, there was a guy that I used to be friends with on YouTube. He actually still kind of makes videos from time to time, I think. I don't know. I don't really keep up with him. We had a falling out a long time ago. It's, it's a long story. I covered it on the channel many years ago. But... The point that I'm saying with that, or the reason why I say it, is because of the fact that he used to tell me whenever we would play tests and just talk on Skype, yes, this is how far we're going back, we're going back like 10 years now at this point when we were using fucking Skype, and he would tell me, well, Avery, I don't need to play the best deck to know how it works. I don't need to play the best deck to learn how it functions. I'm going to play what decks I want to play because I refuse to play the best decks of the format. I refuse to play meta. And he loved fucking Gravekeepers. And he's like, if Gravekeepers were the best deck of the format, I wouldn't play it because I don't want to play the best deck of the format and all this other shit. He was giving himself a fucking handicap. He did not want to learn the best decks of the meta by playing them. He thought he could learn them by just playing against them. This is a very bad mindset to have. No matter how much you hate meta decks, if you only want to play rogue decks, if you only want to play burn decks, if you only want to play an Exodia deck, you need to understand how other decks in the meta as a whole, whatever format we're in, whether it's a month from now or five years from now, you need to understand how these decks function, how they work, and what their choke points are. And you can only learn so much from watching a YouTube video or, you know, watching replays of the deck working. Because especially with replays, you don't know how those got cherry picked. You don't know with the person showing you these replays of how this deck is busted. In a 10 minute video, they may have, you know, played a hundred duels and singles and matches can differentiate that as well. They may have played a hundred games to get 10 good replays you know what i mean you know if you take something like i don't know uh, a crappy ftk deck insert a very inconsistent ftk deck here you know even telephone ftk to a, to a degree is a glass cannon you know how do you know that you're watching the telephone ftk replay video on whoever's channel how do you know that like the five replays that they're showing weren't cherry picked out of like 50 games where 45 of those games they lost or like over half of those games they bricked. You know, they may say, oh, this is broken, but then it's like you try it for yourself and you're like, this shit sucks. It happens all the time, especially with Egyptian God card decks. I will build like an, an Egyptian God card deck that I find on YouTube and I test it myself and I'm like, this is dog shit. Like it is so inconsistent and bad. But yet when you watch the replay video, you see like six games and we're like, oh, he dropped Wing Dragon of Raw. It's got 12,000 attack and blah, 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 blah. And it's like, uh, he cherry picked that crap. And now you may be saying, well, Avery, You've even said yourself, you don't know how to play tier element. Tier element is just too confusing. You know, I tried playing Sprite. I can't learn Sprite. Even if you cannot learn how these decks work, if you are at least able to go on Dueling Book. I, I use Dueling Book all the time for solo mode. I think Dueling Book is hot garbage, but I will use it for the solo mode to goldfish hands. And I will go, I will build the deck. Let's just say tier element as an example. I'll build tier element. 
I'll go into solo mode on dueling book and I'll just start goldfishing hands. Even if I'm misplaying and I don't know what the hell I'm doing and I'm completely just not making the correct board, I'm not making the correct lines of play, at least I'm understanding how at a basic face value, how the deck functions. You know, this is something that my dad's going through a lot right now because as I've talked about before on the channel, you know, he loved playing Mystic Mind. It's all that he played once the card came out in Dark Neo Storm. And now he's playing things like Remaju. He's, you know, messing around with different kinds of rogue decks. Uh, he's even messed around with Runic for a little bit. And to him, this, this is how... <laughs> Not bad of a player he is, but this is how much he's stuck with Mystic Mind. He feels like Runic and Grimaju are combo. And it's like, it's not combo. And I told him, like, I, I would make the argument that you make as many plays with Runic, if not less, than you would with Mystic Mind. You know, you summon a Pathfinder, get a Mystic Mind, play it, play Field Barrier, end your turn. You know, yeah, you can't be so brain dead with Runic as you can with Mystic Mind. But just sitting on YouTube and watching a video of a deck profile or replays of how the deck works is not going to make you any better. So I've been telling my dad and encouraging him, like, you need to play these decks, even if it's just like in a solo mode on Dueling Book to understand how the deck functions. You know, build it IRL in Goldfish Hands. I have Runic built IRL. You know, sit at a fucking table in Goldfish Hands and understand how the deck functions and make changes from there. You know, I told my dad countless times, I understand that you like burn. I understand that you like these decks, but you have to adapt if you want to get better. Like I told him straight up, like you easily could have gone like five and one or six and one or whatever at that Kissimmee regional, but instead he went like five, two and two because he didn't understand the end of fucking time match procedures, even though I told him before, but he gets so lackadaisical with playing on Dueling Nexus or EDO Pro where the rules are taken care of for you that he got lazy. And we all get like that from time to time, right? Like I'll be playing a deck on EDO Pro, the chains are being taken care of for me. You know, I'm not having to worry about using Kit Kalos first. The, the game is going to tell me to use Kit Kalos first. We all get like that. It's not just my dad. It's not just me. It's not just you know, M. Cole 40, whoever, happens to everybody. But that's where you need to really hone in and you need to focus on, okay, what is the correct line of play here? You know, like my dad, he's testing Grimage and he says it's all combo heavy and I take too long in my plays. That may be true, but the more you practice, the more you get better with these decks, not only do you learn the choke points, but then you also learn the proper line of play so that you're not just playing against the deck and saying, oh, I know the choke point. I'm going to ash this card. And then they're like, haha, bitch, I can extend through it. That's the difference between what makes a average player into a good player. Even if you do not understand how the decks function, being able to test hands and understand to a degree how the deck works will help you in the long run, especially when you're trying to beat the deck. You know, again, to go back to tier element, if you play tier element and you, you, you hate the deck, but you played it to at least understand how it works. And let's say you're playing Sprite, right? It doesn't matter the variation, the runic, whatever. You see an opponent playing tier and you see them milling with the RNG. They're making a board. And then by the time they pass turn to you, you're looking at the board going, this dumbass misplayed. And you know that. Why? Because you tested the deck. Because you played the deck. You learned the lines of play. You learned the choke points. You learned the weaknesses. And you have that knowledge because you actually tested the deck. You didn't just sit there with your diddly in your hand and just watch someone combo off and say, oh, I know how it works. Don't be fucking lazy with it. <laughs> I'm not saying that you have to play test like 80 hours a week or any garbage like that. Patrick Hoban said that years ago. And I'm just like, dude, go, go, go keep working out in the gym. Go keep on losing weight. You know what the fuck you're talking about. He's a good player. But I mean, there are some people who take this too seriously and say you've got to play like 80 hours a week. No, like I'm not doing that shit. But if you take the time, at least for like a couple of days, learn how a deck functions. I still think Dark World is a pile of trash. What did I do? I still built the deck online and goldfished the deck and understood how it functioned because you never know what you may find when you're testing something. You know, you take something like, let's say, Sprite, just as an example, before they come out. You start testing with the deck and you realize, oh, hey, ding, 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 ding. Here's something that people haven't noticed. Ipira, I can summon it and draw two, uh, draw one. It's a level two. I can drop out my sprites. You know, people didn't, people didn't really realize that type of thing at first. So if you want to get better, sure, you can play your Mayakashi deck. You can play your Skull Servant deck, your what the fuck ever deck. But it pays in dividends to play the rogue decks, to play the best decks of the format. Well, Avery, I don't want to play tier zero. Da -da. That's fine. You don't have to play it, but play the deck, at least goldfish hands, even if you don't fully understand how the deck functions, to understand where the choke points are, to understand how to beat the deck. Watching YouTube videos 
and I'll even call myself out, watching my videos is only going to help you so much. You know, if you're trying to learn how to drive a car, are you going to be able to learn how to drive the car if you're just sitting there watching someone drive the car for you while you take notes? No, your butt cheeks need to be sitting in that seat, <laughs> not making no boo-boo stand up in my Dodge Challenger, you know what I mean? And actually drive the bitch yourself. That's the only way you're going to learn. It, in math class, do you learn math and like trigonometry and shit by just watching a YouTube video on like, I don't know, the Pythagorean theorem or whatever? I haven't taken math in years. I sucked at math until I got to college and it was easy. Um, you know, like you actually got to practice out problems. It's the same thing here. Like, hello? So guys, let me know what you think down in the comments below. Do you like this series? I mean, the last video got like almost 60 views or something at the time of making this one. So let me know if you want me to continue this series. Yu-Gi-Oh is kind of, you know, dying off competitively right now until we hit 2023 with Photon Hypernova. And I really want to help people get better at the game uh, as I've always wanted to do with this channel. So, and of course, have some fun along the way. So guys, thank you so much for watching. Let me know what you think down in the comments below and I will see you in the next video.